Praise the Lord. Good morning and welcome to the sunrise with Jesus. The sunrise helps us to see the richness of the colors around us. And so this morning, I want to ask you, are you a green person? Well, green stands for life. Green stands for the riches of our environment. But green traditionally also represents jealousy or envy. And today we want to see how we can journey from a place of envy or jealousy to a place where we can truly celebrate the fullness of life. attitude anyone can have is envy. Well, the Bible says that envy causes our bones to rot. In other words, envy saps life of its joy. When you look, envy or jealousy makes a person cut a very sorry picture because it is the ingredient of losers. An envious person is always portrayed having a sideward glance. Why so? Because in envy or jealousy, I'm looking at the other person with insecurity. I'm so worried that the good in the other person could completely discredit who I am. And it could also be because of greed. I'm not able to appreciate what I have and I really want to have what the other person has. Now we must know for sure that jealousy is a very common disease, a very sickly disease, a very deathly disease, and it is one of the most ancient spiritual diseases. When you look at the Bible, in the very first pages, we see the first murder was prompted by jealousy, where a brother, kills his brother. Cain was jealous that Abel's offerings were far more well received than his own and that jealousy prompts him to kill his brother, to shed the blood of his own brother. And as you go through the Bible, you see there are several such instances. For instance, Joseph, who is sold by his own brothers in such ruthlessness, solely out of jealousy. So what does jealousy do? It deprives us of the finest and the richest of relationships. Now friends, there's something so strange about jealousy because very often a person could end up being envious of someone not because they are better than them. Very often you could see the most intelligent people, the most beautiful people, the most gifted people, the most successful people driven and broken by jealousy. It is so strange because very often we look at someone not because they are better than us but because we assume that they are better off than us. You know what I mean? A person can never be better than who you are. They may have a gift or a talent that you don't have and for that reason you could look at their life and envy them. And here is where the Bible explains to us that jealousy is illogical. It is strange. Why? Because clearly the Bible diagnoses for us that jealousy, bitter envy and selfish ambition are earthly, unspiritual and demonic. And the Bible continues to explain that where there is selfish ambition and bitter envy, there will be disorder and every type of evil. So friends, we need to know that jealousy is definitely not a godly characteristic. And because it is not a godly characteristic, it deprives us of everything that makes for life. It deprives us of the best of relationships. It deprives us of godliness. It deprives us of the beauty of life. And so here are four excellent guides to get out of the place of jealousy and into the place where we can relish the goodness of life. And the first is, to adopt 
an attitude of gratitude. Remember friends, when light comes in, darkness has to fade away. And sometimes we could be fighting with our own jealousy. We could be embarrassed about it. But remember, there is a positive approach. And the positive approach is to thank God because God has created you with a unique and a supremely wise and loving plan. See, God is an expert and he never makes a second grade person. So you, as you are, where you are, is the beautiful, perfect handwork of God's love and wisdom. Very often, we could look at some dimension of another person's life and think life is unfair. Well, we must remember what we are seeing is only a dimension. And God has given that other person certain qualities because a plan that God has for that person is different, not better than the plan he has for your life. So firstly, acknowledge God's unique and supreme love and wisdom for your life. The second thing is acknowledge jealousy where it is. Now, very often, envy or jealousy cloaks itself in different forms. For instance, a person who's very envious will always be super critical, could always be adopting a hateful attitude. So we need to firstly acknowledge that very often I could be nitpicking or finding fault with someone because I'm having in my own heart a burden of jealousy. So firstly acknowledge that you are struggling with the disease of jealousy and very importantly recognize and declare that you do not want jealousy. Reject jealousy. Thirdly, remember this. The gift that the other person has is a blessing meant for you. Yes, when you look at a community, very often you will see each person with some extraordinary trait, a special trait that makes them so needed to make our community and our world so lively. There could be someone who jokes very well. Now, we should be able to enjoy that joke without being very hurt that I cannot joke as well as he or she does. Maybe there's someone else who sings very well. We should be able to rejoice in the music, in the tone, in the pitch of her, his or her voice. And we should be able to celebrate the other's gift. Perhaps as someone who's very intelligent, someone who's very practical, someone who's very caring. Now, each person has a gift and you and I, we are just as blessed by that person's gift. And here is where if we instead are jealous, we are depriving ourselves of that blessing that was meant for us. Fourthly, remember, this is a death blow to jealousy. Remember, every gift you have should be consecrated for the kingdom of God. It is interesting that the Bible often links jealousy or bitter envy along with selfish ambition. When I know the gifts I have, the talents I have, all that is good in me has been given by God for a purpose to build his kingdom, to spread love and joy and peace, what happens? Not only am I grateful for what I am, I am able to appreciate others. I'm able to celebrate their gift because I know every gift is so essential and needed for building the great, big, wonderful kingdom of God. Friends, remember this. We can choose to appreciate another person. We can even choose to emulate a good quality. We've heard of how St. Vincent de Paul was so impressed by St. Francis de Sales and he should have felt insecure. He should have felt jealous. But it says when he looked at St. Francis de Sales, he was able to say, if this great and wonderful bishop is so beautiful, how much more beautiful is God? He realized the gift of the other person was drawing him to love and seek God. And not only that, 
St. Vincent de Paul was noted to have a very irritable temperament and he started praying to God. God, if you have given him gentleness, give me that gentleness. Friends, yes, when we appreciate or emulate another person for some good quality they have, for the great purpose of building the kingdom of God, our hearts are filled. But if we choose to settle for envy, our hearts will be drained. And know this, we can live a life free of jealousy, free of envy, free of selfishness. And that is when our life, our gifts will blossom and make this world a beautiful place. As you listen to this message, may you today consecrate your gifts, your talents, and all that you are for building the great big kingdom of God. And with that, you will realize an inner freedom to be able to celebrate and rejoice every gift, every person who has been brought into your life. My dear brothers and sisters, I present before you Matthew chapter 19 verse 24 and I tell you it is easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. This is a hard saying. We may think, in that case, no rich person will enter the kingdom of God. Did Jesus mean that? There are rich people, there are poor people among us. Did Jesus really mean that no rich person will enter the kingdom of God? When we read the Bible, we understand that Jesus did not mean any of the rich person will not enter the kingdom of God. In the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 19, we find a person called Zacchaeus. He was very rich. He was a tax collector. But when this man meets Jesus, when he was ready to share his wealth with others, Jesus said, Salvation has come to this family. So the rich people can enter the kingdom of God. When they are able to enter the kingdom of God, when they are ready to share their wealth with others. So Jesus means by a rich man means a person who is selfish. A selfish rich man will not enter the kingdom of God. A rich man who is ready to share his wealth with others, with the poor people, they will certainly enter the kingdom of God. There is a small story. In that story, a poor man coming to, is, he is coming to the presence of God and he is complaining to God. God, I am so poor. I don't have anything. There are many people around me. They are very rich. They enjoy their life. Why I am so poor? God said in reply, You are poor because you don't share anything with others. Then this man was surprised. He said, God, I am poor. How can I share my things with others? I don't have anything. Then God said to him, Materially, you may be poor. But you have many things as wealth. You have your good health. You have time. You have good words to share with others. You have smile to give others. You can share these things. When you share these things with others, they will appreciate. They may call you for a job. They may make you partners of their business. That way, you will materially become rich. Richness has meaning only when you share 
your wealth with others if you don't share your wealth with others you are rich but you will not enter the kingdom of god my dear brothers and sisters let us look into ourselves and see whether we are ready to share our wealth with others wealth in all sense not only material wealth but wealth in the full sense are we ready to share our wealth with others jesus is asking to share whatever we have with the needy let us begin this day with this reflection may god bless you it is light that reveals to us the beauty and the colors of nature and it is god who reveals to us the true value of every gift that we have of the persons who have come our way yes for us to celebrate life we first need to celebrate god so come let us adore jesus lifting holy hands to him as a pledge my life on you i worship you in spirit i worship you in truth make my life a holy praise unto him bend the knees i come with a humble heart that i come bowing down before your holy throne as i look upon your face show your mercy and your grace change my life spirit make me fresh and ever new make my life a holy sacrifice to you make my life a holy sacrifice to you I bend the knees i come i bend to my knees before you o oh lord In all humility before you we come to you through the holy hands to you let us raise our hands up to the lord in worship i worship you i worship you o lord i worship you in truth make my life a holy Make my heart a holy place. Make my heart a holy place. Make my body a temple of your spirit. Make my body a holy place unto you. Praise you Lord Jesus we thank you. We worship you O God. We surrender our life to you Lord. At your feet O God as mother Mary surrendered. her life her future everything of hers she placed at your feet in total self giving in worship of you o oh god here we are worshiping and adoring you lord son of god the beloved of the father son of mother mary you have come to us in this humble form humble form of a host a piece of bread so small you have become because we are so great in your eyes you wanted to be with us you loved us to that great extent and you showed us what that extent is becoming so small for us becoming food for us that we may never die that we may live forever in your presence oh god oh god your love is filling our hearts and this awesome presence of your love oh god we surrender our lives we have only you oh god jesus we trust in you mother mary 
pray for us your children are sick your children are distressed your children feel abandoned frightened mother mary pray for us that the healing power of your son should flow into our body and mind now healing power of the lord feel the comfort the heavenly comfort flowing from the heart of the lord to your heart every sick person every broken person felt it the heavenly comfort of the presence of the lord flowing into them and consoling them comforting them every broken person felt it the power healing power flowing into them and healing them feel it my brothers and my sisters with great faith turn to the lord raise your arms up to the lord in faith and praise him at this moment rejoice your healing is here the savior is here a god is here but the mary is praying for us as a mother concerned about the sick children rejoice in the presence of the lord god's power healing power coming upon us now thank you lord jesus praise you we worship you god thank you for this healing this comfort thank you, this great Jesus. joy Jesus. of your presence Jesus. lord thank you all the pain of the body all the disability of the body lord you are healing us now praise you lord jesus thank you hallelujah 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 praise you jesus thank you lord hallelujah 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 praise you jesus thank you lord jesus Let us receive the blessing the blessing of our God with great faith in your heart love for the Lord receive the blessing the blessing that would fill our hearts with great joy and power
The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust CD account number 04022310 14 HDFC Bank Chalakudi branch IFSC code HDFC 0000402 and email the details to divine retreat center at gmail.com